Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Shelly Gandhi, and I am one of the initial leads for CoData Connect Early Career and Alumni Network. We are happy to have you all for our webinar under the Research Skill Development today. Topic for the day is data journalism to bridge the information asymmetry with our presenter, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. All the audience will be muted during the presentation. Dr. Pandey will speak for about 40 minutes and then we will open the floor for questions. If you have any questions, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. And this will be selected by our team, which would be read out and answered after the presentation. We will record the webinar and upload it for future reference along with the presentation. Now, without further delay, we'll turn the time over to our presenter. Uh, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey is Associate Professor and Head of Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Sundarnath College of Women, Kolkata. He is also an adjunct professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, University of Calcutta in India. Before joining academics, he was a senior journalist with English Daily, The Asian Age, Kolkata an editorial board member of a number of international journals. He has published over 20 papers and has author, authored and edited four books. He has conducted training programs and workshops for corporate communicators, teachers, journalists, and students at different parts of the country on themes including data journalism, conventional intelligence, media literacy, social network analysis, journalist job satisfaction, and framing of election news, and many more. So I welcome you, Dr. Pandey, to present to this wonderful audience. Uh, thank you, Shelley, for the wonderful introduction. Thank you for having uh, data journalism on the panel. Thank you, everyone at uh, CoData. So this will be a perspective uh, from a data journalist and, and a data journalist educator about uh, the uh, information asymmetry and how data journalists try to uh, take care of that uh, information asymmetry, especially muted uh, uh, Indian perspective. So before I start, you know, there will be a small uh, historical background to how data journalism came about. Then we go on to uh, the basics of uh, data journalism, how journalists access information how they uh, analyze that and you know the presentation techniques for data journalism are uh, somewhat different from uh, uh, traditional uh, journalism so we will be talking uh, generally about that and some of the uh, regular everyday work that uh, journalists do to uh, get information onto spreadsheets to uh, look for stories into those spreadsheets and finally look for a certain angle in which to uh, make it palatable to the audience so uh, i'll straight away get into the uh, basics of uh, uh, journalism first of all this is about uh, a very recent study this is uh, from last year and uh, cw anderson uh, talks about uh, you know two different claims that journalists make or journalism makes uh, generally one is that you know its uh, uh, claims are incredibly modest it simply reports the news of the day very quickly that's the job that journalists have to do but then it also assumes that it has the methodological techniques that it that allows it to objectively parse social reality now that's a very big claim that journalism makes and also it establishes that claim through certain techniques through certain strategies that have developed over the years so basically uh, there is it there is there are these two uh, as we could say uh, divergent directions one that the epistemological claims are incredibly modest second it's incredible at the other end it's incredibly wide ranging that 
it possesses the exact tools to parse social reality and also to uh, take it out to the uh, common audience to the general audience one of the first tools that journalism uses is what is known as narrative journalism so the tools of literary fiction including details including internal monologue or the short story structure or uh, you know character presentation or you know presenting stories in a form where you know there is a problem and a resolution so that people can identify with these truth claims narrative journalism has uh, long been used uh, to establish the truth claim that journalism makes of having the right uh, tools to find out what is the social reality and then present it in a manner in which the audience finds it uh, finds it believable so this is one tool that journalism has been having and uh, all journalists uh, have to have this as part of their soft skills of having the uh, capacity or the ability to uh, provide powerful story structures which people can uh, you know identify with or uh, something that resonates with their everyday experience now so far so good the problem started when you know the everyday work of journalism started you know uh, uh, you know getting diluted when people did not always uh, you know uh, uh, get into the uh, nitty gritty of fact checking and and all such things because uh, there is this very important anecdote that all uh, uh, pe uh, you know people uh, uh, generally you know journalism professors they keep on talking about that about you know where narrative journalism went wrong this is not to you know run down narrative journalism at the end of the presentation i will also talk about how useful narrative journalism can be and it is in fact but then the problem with narrative journalism started when uh, you know there was this uh, very important event with washington post in 1980 where there was a moving piece about uh, a 13 year old heroin addict unfortunately for the writer the piece won a pulitzer prize now that led to renewed public interest in jimmy the the character of that particular story that story was very powerfully written and you know it resonated with uh, everybody and that is how you know a uh, lot of uh, issues involving you know uh, drug abuse uh, came to the forefront but then it turned out that jimmy did not exist it was a made up story cook lost her job and she lost the prize and it soon became obvious that you know uh, the uh, uh, exalted position that narrative journalism was in it was uh, it, it, it took a major shock because uh, the option was always there for uh, for for journalists uh, the temptation was always there for them that you know the fact checking could lead to uh, you know uh, ruining a good story so do not let facts come in the way of a good story the answer was uh, uh, you know provided by philip mayer in 1973 where you know he introduced what is known as uh, precision journalism and lot of the things of data journalism and computer assisted reporting and data assisted reporting that uh, we talk about it it uh, uh, owes its uh, origin to this uh, precision journalism movement which started in the 1970s especially by uh, philip mayer it treated journalism as if it were science adopting scientific methods adopting statistical techniques adopting uh, scientific ideals you know for processing information and presenting it to the audience in a manner in which they could verify for themselves or they could uh, make out for themselves or the evidence was uh, foregrounded for them the audience could see the evidence for themselves and uh, this is what precision journalism uh, was expected to answer how to find the information how to evaluate and analyze the information how to communicate in a manner and that's where you know uh, we will talk about uh, today's theme about you know how to uh, make sure that the information overload which reaches to you know some kind of a, uh, you know a problem with uh, processing information because you know unless as communicators we do not provide people with information that is relevant to them otherwise you know the uh, data itself it doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense so it's important that the journalists uh, are aware of the problems of information overload we'll just talk about you know how much information is there and, and so on and so forth but to get out the signal from the noise is what the uh, job of the journalist is so that's that's very important yeah 
so how much precision is required for a particular story that's where that's where we have to be you know uh, concerned about we will go on to the present digital ecosystem this is something that uh, is always you know debated how much of uh, digital information is available but what is important for data journalists and you know data communicators is to realize that there's almost everything on 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 the uh, planet which can be you know uh, uh, digitized or which is available in a digital format so like you know news sources which are uh, you know uh, which 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 in the erstwhile narrative journalism era and which maybe 20 years back were related to people to human beings it was uh, data was not material data was in that point of time if we use data in the larger sense of the term it was about human beings people who had access to information if journalists could get close to them they would get information but now things are uh, different because everybody has access to information the access to information is uh, uh, is, 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 is profound by one guesstimate there are 40 trillion gigabytes of data that's about 40 zettabytes and you know if we have to put it in a very simple terms you know the uh, information is so much the digital information is so much that if we stack it on dvds then you know the stack of dvds would be long enough to circle earth 50 times so that much amount of data is available that's one part of the picture the second part of the picture is about you know the uh, access to you know digital uh, facilities or access to uh, 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 digital infrastructure now this is from the uh, nso 2018 figure this is and this is where they do not consider smartphones as computer but still people who are able to uh, uh, operate computers it's, it's 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 pretty less you know this is the urban figure and the and, and this is a, these are the rural figures so amount of people who are able to operate computer or who are able to use internet or who have used internet it's it's pretty less now the inability to take in and process the volume of information this is one major problem that you know uh, all of us uh, face as a citizens and the job of journalists is to make uh, uh, you know the meaning of the information uh, uh, easier for them to uh, make sense of so it's not about you know providing information it is about uh, providing in uh, you know providing a, a, a you know kind of a explanation of the information that is available for people so because you know makes uh, this this is done in, in in many different ways so we'll talk about uh, as as data journalists in, in a moment but this 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 is a dichotomy that we have to understand that at one level there is so much of information that is available at another level this huge volume of information uh, brings out you know problems of, of how to make sense of that information how to see trends in that information how to you know uh, find out you know relative issues in, in, in that information so that is where you know data journalism comes in or that is where uh, you know data communicators come in about uh, providing them the meaning of the news more than the news the meaning of the news becomes important and uh, there are a lot of benefits that data journalism provides us uh, uh, as journalists one of it is that you know we do not have to limit ourselves on to just anecdotes the evidence about what is happening and you know why it is happening and what it is the data allows us to provide evidence beyond the anecdote because uh, in the earlier uh, cases uh, the uh, uh, evidence was just about anecdotes about what people had to say or what somebody uh, uh, some official source had to say about that particular situation but now the evidence is much stronger data journalism can uh, uh, you know uh, begin with uh, uh, you know very small things so i will try and distinguish between two very important things here about using uh, high tech data and big data and about using you know everyday stories and uh, what can be uh, said as you know uh, uh, low tech data something that you can do on our uh, something that we can do on our spreadsheets so uh, in in today's presentation i will concentrate more on everyday stories more on what uh, journalists can uh, do on an everyday level so uh, one of the things that we do is about comparing with last year about what's gone up and down what's the highest what is the least and uh, such things i will explain uh, how journalists go about all that uh, when when we come to the spreadsheet uh, spreadsheet section of it 
but uh, data journalism of course is a very important tool and it is also uh, uh, you know uh, it adds value uh, for the readers because the readers have access to the truth claims that are being made because when we started off we uh, said that you know the earlier truth claims were made only through the narrative techniques now journalists have the possibility of providing the data up front for people to uh, you know uh, investigate about the truth claims that journalists are making so it's not about uh, uh, just uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, narrative structures. It's about providing evidence for the readers who can make uh, sense of the information in a better manner. Uh, so, so much for the background of data journalism. Uh, we started off with narrative uh, uh, journalism and then why data journalism was important and how uh, data journalism can help journalists establish truth claims. Now, uh, three very important areas why you know data journalism is uh, important, because the three uh, main functions or three main uh, things that data journalists have to do is different from what they were doing uh, earlier. Now, there are a lot of uh, schools of thought on uh, that. We will uh, uh, you know get on with that as as we go along, because one school of thought is about uh, data journalists behaving as regular news hounds. And for them, data is just like any other information that they would be, you know, after as regular journalists. And the second approach is that of a techie journalist, where you have all the hard skills of, uh, you know, how to access uh, uh, information which is not publicly available and how to, you know, uh, make sense of that data and present it for our regular uh, viewers and, you know, news consumers. So uh, we will be, you know, mainly uh, concerning ourselves with the first approach the uh, news hound approach it's not just about uh, the techie approach but the news hound approach where we are searching for data and from that data we are trying to look out for stories which make sense for people which are relevant for people's uh, everyday lives and uh, some something that they can uh, uh, identify with one of the easiest things that we uh, as journalists do is to go for the uh, you know simple google search where we uh, go for a slightly advanced uh, technique of you know trying for the file type search so if one you know goes for a file type uh, colon xlsx or file type uh, colon csv with a regular uh, google search say for example covid in uh, covid in uh, uh, in india file type colon csv then we get uh, structured information which is out there on the internet so this is one of the easiest ways of uh, trying to look for data but of course you know this is this is not uh, sufficient there are a whole lot of uh, government data sites available for everyone to uh, uh, look for data.gov is uh, for a uh, you know a global level uh, data site where one can you know just log in and get for all uh, get uh, hold of all that data data.gov.in is uh, for indian data we have uh, the india.gov.in data portal india we have uh, so here we are talking of the data as as a material or, or the materiality of data this material data is available on these public sites and we have to uh, know the hard skills of accessing uh, data in a structured format in the row and column format that we are so uh, uh, that 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 we uh, uh, that is so very uh, you know known to us so when we have data in that row or, uh, row and column format we can make make sense of that data and uh, provide the analysis that is required there so all this data is uh, generally available on, on public sites these are results of uh, freedom of information acts or right to information acts that uh, are there for uh, different governments the world over so much of this data is provided up front as public data so even the reserve bank of india database is a fabulous uh, database on on indian economy there is the ministry of statistics and program implementation data set a uh, lot of indian data sets are from this mospi uh, data set we have the gateway to indian earth observation we have the national portal of india we have the survey of india we have indian uh, weather data we have uh, 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 import exports data set we have uh, the wildlife data set and so on and so forth so we have a lot of these data sets that are that are available to uh, 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 us as as a public data set then we also have the option of getting uh, data through you know various web scraping techniques i will demonstrate one or two of these uh, web scraping techniques of uh, getting data from from uh, you know uh, 
in uh, websites we we uh, can go up to you know uh, writing codes to extract data but that is beyond the scope of today's presentation but the point that we are trying to make is that we as data journalists we acquire these hard skills of accessing data from all over we uh, uh, access data you know in 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 terms of uh, public uh, uh, data which is available as a csv or excel formats or at times we have to scrape data or there are you know uh, sites like twitter which provide uh, this uh, 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 application uh, programming interface and if you have a developer account you are allowed to download data from there today we'll be basically talking about this extension of data miner which will help us to uh, get data from websites there are all, all these things are uh, you know similar uh, extensions which can help us to download unstructured data from the internet uh, onto our spreadsheet a very important search for uh, uh, journalists and for everyone is this uh, data set search so rather than going for a prop uh, you know normal google search if you go for the data search dot google.com then you can you know get uh, data in uh, uh, structured uh, uh, spreadsheet formats the uh, google public data explorer is another very important uh, uh, you know data source as well then we have uh, for for uh, the us case we have this uh, uh, you know election data bot data bot we have dataportals.com where again you know it, it's a consortium of uh, uh, data sources google trends is a very important source of uh, uh, you know getting data we have the international consortium of investigative journalists and you know these are important data sources uh, which are available to uh, uh, you know potential uh, communicators about data i will just talk about two very simple techniques that data journalists can uh, uh, involve themselves with one is the import html technique the other is the import feed technique that we should know about and this is where we have access to data on a regular uh, I hope this site is visible to everybody. Unmuted. Yes. This is uh, the uh, yeah. Thank you. So this is the uh, mohf.gov.in site. Uh, there are some very simple techniques of getting, say, for example, this table. One way would be to you know just copy and paste it onto our spreadsheets and you know make some sense of it. Uh, another very easy way for us would be to you know just uh, uh, you know go to uh, for example a google spreadsheet and type in uh, import html colon https colon www.mohf.gov.in which is the site there the url the first uh, uh, thing there is about the url in inverted commas the second command is it's a table and the third thing is the table number so if we just press in this here the entire data from that particular site will be available to us as a spreadsheet and it can be downloaded onto an excel or you know whatever format and we can make sense of it we'll talk about uh, how to uh, you know analyze that data as well so one very simple technique is to go for getting this data from a website which is which has data in a tabular format and getting it onto our spreadsheet so we uh, we have very simple commands for getting that data onto spreadsheets we can also use extensions uh, on 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 chrome uh, one of the chrome extension is uh, is this data miner is this visible is this uh, uh, data miner uh, tab visible to everyone yes I mean, yes it is yeah. okay okay so uh, there's another you know this is just an extension that we add to chrome and you know there's a thing you know of of getting uh, the table data so uh, 
it can be any kind of table data. In fact, uh, data miner can help us extract uh, data which is which may not be uh, in a tabular form. So there are uh, ways of extract, you know, creating those recipes and you know uh, extracting data from there. But the simple thing is, we have these tools available to access data from websites onto our spreadsheets so that we can analyze them. So that's a very uh, you know uh, simple straightforward technique of using you know the import HTML uh, command that uh, spreadsheet provides us. There are you know import uh, feed command and all. I will show you import feed as well. So import HTML command provides us th that data in a retrievable format which we can analyze. Of course, this requires a lot of cleaning. I will talk about cleaning in a moment's time. But uh, this is one thing that we uh, as uh, journalists do on a regular basis of providing of getting uh, information from data onto our spreadsheets. Another very uh, simple technique that we uh, perform here is about the RSS feed, the relatively simple syndicate feed, and that would you know help us access stories on a regular basis rather than you know going on to uh, our uh, these websites on a regular basis. It's easy for us to just. So, for example, I, I get this particular feed on my. Uh, yeah, so now it is updated to 14 July. So uh, once you know the URL of the, uh, you know, the RSS feed of these uh, news organizations, this one is from Hindu, for example, and uh, there are ways in which you can, you know, uh, very simply, you know, get to know there are, uh, you know, uh, small. Uh, so one is that you know it either ends with an RSS or with a feed or with atom or whatever. Now, if you use the import feed option, and you know you just uh, provide in the true is for you know the headers. If I write false there, the head, head, headers would go away. You, we can see the headers here about title, author, URL, date, created, summary. If instead of uh, you know I don't want headers, I just write false there, the header goes away. 100 because you know I want 100 stories every day. I, I can get as much as as many as uh, 250 stories in a day. So it automatically updates itself and I get to know about you know what is happening. So this keep uh, if, if I have to keep track of you know whatever is happening uh, you know in, in India right now or what uh, the uh, newspaper considers is happening in India right now. So we have uh, all such uh, information available as data feed on our Google spreadsheets. We just have to know about the uh, uh, RSS URL. So this one doesn't have a, yeah. So this this is about, you know, uh, indianexpress.com.feed. As I told you, it's either, you know, it has a RSS at the end or it has a feed or it might also have a uh, atom at the end. So this is about, you know, it, it updates itself uh, regularly without, you know, having to, uh, ask questions of it so it gives me in a very uh, compact format you know whatever uh, information that this particular newspaper outlet considers is uh, considers important so that you know i can uh, ask questions of that data or i can uh, use that data to uh, look for further stories so this is another option of uh, getting data from the internet so uh, We've spoken of three particular uh, ways of getting it through the import HTML, through the import feed option, and also from uh, Google Chrome extensions. I've just spoken about, uh, uh, you know, one extension uh, which is Data Miner. There are many other, uh, you know, extensions available. We simply don't have time for that, but maybe uh, that is something that all of us can explore at a later date. So let's go back to our presentation. So this is, you know, a, a very powerful tool of getting information onto free uh, spreadsheets. If it's available in a CSV format, then we have to go for import data command. Otherwise, you know, we go for these particular commands. Right. So we have downloaded some data and we will talk about, you know, how to get stories from there. So the first task of data journalists is to look for relevant data. Then we come to the second part. In fact, before the second part, there is a very, very important part, which is about cleaning data. But unfortunately, we won't be talking about uh, cleaning data today. 
uh, that almost takes about you know more than 60 to 70 percent of uh, a data journalist time and uh, for uh, everybody you know who's done some statistical work you would know how important cleaning data is so just to emphasize that you know data cleaning is a very very important aspect of uh, uh, data journalism but uh, we go straight way into the second part about analyzing data so the first part was about accessing data and we just spoke of just one or two simple techniques of if it is present in an uh, xlsx format or csv format how do we get it if it is not present in that format how do we get it onto the spreadsheet the idea is to get information onto spreadsheets if it is not uh, there as a spreadsheet format then we'll have to convert into a spreadsheet format after that data is available our job is to look for stories inside that data because that's what the job is otherwise this data is available to everybody most of it is public and if it is not public then we have to know ways of accessing it but that's another story but after you have the data this is where your job starts about you know looking for stories inside that data one of it could be the full picture if time permits i'll try and you know download some data on on the world covid picture and we'll try and see whether we can you know uh, analyze and get a full picture of the data so it, it uh, you know uh, provides me about you know sense of what is happening so as we keep on repeating that you know uh, making sense of the information is more important so if we have to go through or we have to get over this information asymmetry we have to make uh, the meaning of the information relevant or make the meaning of the information accessible to our regular readers and viewers so providing a full picture and the second story so this is just uh, the, this is not an exhaustive list by any means these are just you know uh, regular things uh, uh, and it's available uh, you know on, on various sites all over so this is just an uh, just just an idea about you know uh, what stories we look for in data so we could also be looking for percentage of proportion so what proportion of the entire world or what proportion uh, of 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 uh, you know of the past because you know all these things are related so either we could be talking in terms of a full picture then we talk about proportion because the relative uh, position of the uh, uh, you know, uh, thing that we are studying, it could be a district, it could be a, uh, uh, an organization, it could be a state, it could be a country. So that is very important. You know, how has it changed or what, what percentage of the total or what proportion of the total? So that's a very important story idea that we look for. Before we uh, I mean, uh, uh, carry on, you know, uh, I'll just try and emphasize that for beginning journalists or for everyday journalists, they generally look for three major areas for information one is education the second is crime and third is health so these are the areas which uh, and we call them beat in, in in journalism so we are basically looking for information in the, on these three areas and uh, that's where you know the, the more important stories are available the third uh, story that we could be looking on uh, at a spreadsheet is for internal comparison comparing it with our own position comparing it with our own structures comparing it with uh, uh, you know uh, different parts parts of the uh, you know uh, internal system so this is uh, about an internal comparison that we could be looking at you know this is where uh, maybe inside the state or you know inside uh, inside a district or inside any unit we look for the internal comparison that's one way of looking at it the other is looking at uh, you know uh, looking uh, through an external comparison picture because we keep telling or you know in our data journalism classes that we are either looking for outliers people who are much above average or people who are much lower uh, you know uh, compared to the average or the mean so we are looking for outliers in the stories or, and we are also looking at trends so when we uh, say that you know this is below the national average or this is below the global average so we are you know uh, providing some kind of a co comparison there so we compare the uh, internal structures with some, with some uh, external organization. So that's another uh, uh, data uh, story idea that we get uh, from, 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 from the spreadsheet. The uh, other idea that we can talk about is uh, how has it changed with time? Has it grown? Has it you know, uh, exponentially grown? Has it gone down? I'm sure a lot of us are aware of, uh, you know, and uh, this, is, this, is, this has been a fallout of, uh, the uh, COVID crisis, many people say, especially in the uh, Indi Indian perspective, you know, when I when we talk to a lot of uh, public communicators, the idea we get is that, you know, there is a lot more understanding of health issues these days among uh, uh, the common, uh, you know, reading public and the common viewing public. And that's very important. People have become health literate with time. At the same time, people have also become a little more data literate. 
you know whether uh, you know you are comparing apples to apples or whether you know uh, uh, you know your data makes sense uh, or whether because once data becomes a part of the political discourse when people start using data either to uh, you know uh, put up a narrative or to uh, you know kind of uh, uh, get uh, you know oppose a particular narrative that's where uh, people have to uh, try and understand the relevance of data and try and understand how was the data collected who were the people who were behind you know uh, sponsoring the data collection how was uh, uh, you know uh, how was the data analyzed what is it that the data is not telling us so a lot of uh, data literacy uh, uh, you know things or a lot of these data literacy issues have also become very important uh, or or have gained importance you know in the last three or four months so one of the positive i mean that's probably not the right word to use but one of the things that has you know that covid 19 has caused is about you know uh, better understanding of health issues and probably better understanding of data issues in uh, certain cases so we have uh, you know uh, certain uh, uh, good things to uh, talk about so how has certain things changed with time whether you know trend has gone up or whether you know so uh, flattening the curve is something you know is, is so uh, so much in common parlance that you know we don't even have to talk about in you know, the curves and what it means with time and so on and so forth so how has the data changed with them that is also a very important story has it grown remarkably has it gone down or so we keep on hearing about you know gdp figures and you know all such figures about how much was it last year and how much is uh, how much has it changed this year so that's a very important data idea uh, again you know about uh, whether something has changed with time or it has changed uh, uh, over time another uh, data story or data idea that we can get from spreadsheets is our league tables so i'm sure you know all of us are missing all the wonderful sporting actions that you know we would have been over in the last three four months but league tables uh, owes its uh, origin to the, the sporting league tables where we you know we have certain states or certain countries and then we have the uh, metrics associated with those uh, you know states or institutions or whatever so a league table format is again a very important way of telling a story so that is where you know uh, people uh, can uh, make sense of uh, uh, data as well analysis by categories i will talk about pivot tables uh, uh, you know at the end of my present uh, at the uh, last in the last part of my presentation and there we will see that you know this uh, putting out the data in certain categories can provide us with greater input can provide us with an insight which otherwise might not have been visible so we can get insight about data when we analyze it by categories rather than looking at the full picture of course full picture is a very important part of data journalism but then if we can break it down into categories that again is a very important area uh, of of uh, uh, generating in interesting stories the last part and this is a very important part why are we as journalists uh, you know talking about uh, you know data extraction and data analysis and you know data visualization and all that stuff because it's important to look for associations it's important to look for uh, reasons why certain things are happening it's important to look for trees in the woods and woods in the trees it's important to find out uh you know uh, as, and uh, this relates to what I, I said right at the beginning it, it you have to make meaning of the data that this particular thing is happening because this thing might have happened or you try and relate it not you know in a causal way but in, in a correlation way we are looking for associations so it's always a good narrative journalism technique it's always a good story uh, storytelling technique if we can look for uh, you know uh, information about uh, you know associations now can I just go on for five more minutes because I think we are uh, reaching the time for questions. So do I have time for you know another five minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So this is uh, again, you know, a, a list of uh, data set stories. This is by uh, Paul Rodshaw, regarded as one of the major gurus of data journalism. So this is what uh, he talks about, you know, these are the stories that we can look for in in uh, data sets so whether it's the top of the pops or it's the top of the flops or you know you could be holding up a mirror you could be telling people you could be telling your readers okay this is the reality 
or uh, you know this 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 one relates to the uh, outliers that we uh, spoke about is it is it a part of a trend or is it you know a uh, uh, one off incident or is is it thematic or is it uh, episodic, uh, episodic? A claim debunked or supported so again you know the data can debunk claims or it can support claims but again you know very important that we understand that these claims are uh, you know from data which has gone through all the rigor that normal news sources go through so journalists are trained to be very skeptic of news sources so we have to be very skeptic of the data as well who is behind the data what is it that they are trying to tell us what is it that they are not trying to tell us trend is something that we've spoken about and this again you know is, is one story that will always uh, it will never be old about the postcode lottery this is very uh, interesting it's about you know maybe a certain part of or maybe a certain village or maybe a certain district doing better than many others so what could be the reason so this is one uh, uh, okay this is wrong spelling it should be junking the stats so who are the victims or who are the winners or the losers things happen so whether certain things are not working so these are the stories that we are looking for in uh, spreadsheets after we have gotten the data onto spreadsheet these are the stories that we are looking for for example you know this is one data story when i was making this presentation so 18 states have a recovery rate higher than the national average so uh, the the uh, the you know person who has analyzed the data is looking at uh, outliers which are on the positive side so it depends on you know uh, what your story is this is a very simple story on on a regular basis so we are not talking about uh, Big data. We are not talking about data which have which have to be analyzed through uh, you know uh, computer programs like Python and R. This is about regular everyday data and regular everyday stories. I'll just uh, very uh, quickly go to uh, you know just demonstrate one technique in uh, uh, pivot tables and then we can you know go for questions if you want. So I'll just. So this is one uh, site that is you know very uh, important you can download the entire world database and you know you can get it in a csv format or an xlsx format and you get this data and that data can be taken into a pivot table let me show you how to i'm sure uh, many of you uh, have heard about uh, pivot tables and uh, it's a very important technique for uh, data journalists of getting the information on pivot tables so this is the information which is available and as you can say it's it's on particular dates and you know it, it, it's a day wise information so once we have this information and if you you know see if you scroll down you will see that you know it's about uh, how much almost 30000 uh, rows so probably not very good for an analysis so one very simple way would be to you know take this data and insert pivot tables from this particular data on a news spreadsheet so pivot tables provides us with options of looking data in terms of all these different parameters one could be you know just going for location that would provide me with just the countries and then we could go for uh, say for example uh, total cases per million just a second once you have these total cases per million you can make a lot of analysis one could be a very simple uh, technique okay let me first format it into numbers so what we did was that we uh, took that information we created a very simple pivot table out of that we can create you know a uh, remarkably complex uh, uh, pivot tables as well but one very simple for table would be to you know just take it as a number maybe and we don't even require the decimal places we might require the thousand separated also so this gives me a particular idea and you know i can sort it out maybe from higher largest to smallest which is uh, pretty uh, basic at the same time i can show the values as say for example percentage of the grand total sorry 
or maybe uh, it can provide me with wonderful insights i do not have time to go into the details of you know trying to look for you know uh, uh, stories just trying to demonstrate one very simple technique of looking at relative data how is it relative to uh, uh, you know uh, one particular country so we can you know try and look at the data relative to say for example qatar for example so it can tell me how much it is you know less you know deaths per million this these are just representative figures yeah they're old so they might not be uh, relevant as of today so it could be about you know how much percentage how much uh, difference how much it has changed over time how much it has you know or, or even you know having filters in terms of uh, your population density it can be related to uh, It can be related to your po po population density. It can be related to the median age. It can be related to, uh, or you know, you can have uh, wonderful visualizations there as well. So, uh, we could sort it by, say for example, So according to our figures, uh, uh, Uganda has a median age of 16, whereas India, you can, you can filter data, you can look for information, you can look for trends, you can look for stories, you can look for top 10, you can look for uh, subtotals. So these are uh, certain techniques that uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about. So getting data, accessing it, putting it onto a spreadsheet, then looking for stories onto it, and uh, looking for alternatives not you know what what uh, what are the stories we are looking for we've, we've spoken about you know the kind of stories that we look for but looking it, uh, at it as an exercise in imagination we keep on telling uh, uh, our uh, you know journalist friends uh, when we uh, go for these data journalism trainings is about data journalism as an addition to the journalistic skills your journalistic skills of the three c's which is uh, which is creativity which is uh, 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 curiosity and uh, you know this is this 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 stays and criticality this stays with you the uh, hard skills of data journalism is about accessing data is about analyzing it through uh, very simple pivot table techniques and then finally presenting it but what other story can explain it it should not appear as uh, like the data has come from a data set because the moment this you know it's about numbers and it can be put off for a lot of people so how best you know one can uh, present it how best one can relate it how best one can you know put it in a very very uh, uh, everyday terms so uh, what are the associations that you can out uh, you know draw out of it and that is where we i go back to my first slide about you know using narrative techniques and the information provided by the data so that uh, you know uh, it, it, it makes more sense because if you're not looking at uh, uh, you know alternatives then we could fall into that pitfall because often and that's one thing that we advise uh, journalists and communicators to be very careful about is not to look at data as a lawyer would you know that you know and that's where you know the confirmation bias comes in that we already 
have some idea we already uh, have some uh, belief about how, the explanation of a particular thing and we are just looking for maybe the first possible confirmation of that and we take that data so we should not be looking at data as a lawyer but more as a scientist so if if, if we are not open minded with data then uh, we will not be uh, uh, getting the true picture or we will not be getting the uh, right stories out of data so uh, just because it's it's uh, uh, you know based on numbers doesn't make it uh, uh, you know uh, free from errors or it doesn't make it free from bias so important to look at data not as lawyers but as scientists one uh, uh, very uh, in the last two slides i'll just talk about very simple uh, visualization tools one of the free tools which is available for visualization is uh, this google data studio because data visualization is a science in itself and there are lots of uh, do's and don'ts about data visualization because you know one is you know presenting it in numbers the other is presenting it uh, uh, in a visual uh, as a data visualization uh, relevant for various uh, uh, you know uh, media platforms so if we are using a digital platform then we would probably be going for a more interactive uh, data visualization if it is for a uh, print media then there would be you know different visualizations but at the same time we know how uh, you know even even uh, visualizations can be you know biased how we can you know uh, uh, make data appear what it is not so very important at you know looking at uh, you know vis visualizations to present the true picture or, or to present uh, what what uh, the data is telling us not trying to look for information uh, you know which, which which is not provided in data so generally it has to be you know a very simple it has to provide maybe one or two information because if it gets very complex then uh, the information could be lost another very uh, simple uh, data visualization tool is is uh, this flourish studio so this is one about you know uh, where uh, you can uh, say for example uh, go for these templates which exist in this flourish studio and use data from the election commission of india website for example and provide the true picture for the parliamentary constituencies uh, in the digital format so anybody so can, can easily you know uh, uh, click on to the constituency which uh, is relevant for them and uh, you know use uh, data at a personal level so this is what we uh, in one of the sl uh, slides spoke about personalization of data so uh, these uh, visualization techniques provide with very simple and powerful tools for people to uh, you know personalize the data for for uh, you know uh, themselves and uh, make sense of uh, you know the information overload make sense out of the information overload make sense out of uh, all the uh, you know uh, signal that they can from from the noise which is there i'll i'll stop here we have about uh, some time for questions do we uh, yeah hi thank you so much dr pandey and uh, thank you for taking all the efforts in showing the demonstration and various techniques to use the tools uh, we take it ahead uh, please put in your questions in the question box and i'll request felix to take up the questions uh, thank you shelly and also thank you uma for the insightful presentation on data journalism. That was really, really good. So we have some questions uh, from the audience, and this is from Dr. Pranta, and I'll take the first one. Uh, he asks, does cleaning of data imply getting rid of manipulation of data? Okay, uh, so uh, we have a technique uh, uh, known as uh, data biography. So before uh, you know we uh, use the data, we go to that you know data biography. Just using those uh, five W's and one H that you know we journalists use. That who is responsible for data? What is it that the data tells us? Uh, you know why was this data collected? Where was it collected? And that's very important. You know, very often even the uh, you know wonderful uh, public data that you know sources that we spoke of, even they could be you know uh, comparing apples with oranges they could be at different time levels they could be about different people so when we compare that data it might not provide us with the true picture so very important for us to uh, you know uh, go through these uh, uh, as as uh, they say the data biography techniques of you know finding out the you know five w's and one h about the data and then when you know that this data is relevant this is useful and uh, you know this is what the data is telling me and that's where you know we can uh, use that so uh, 
uh, that's one technique of uh, you know looking at uh, the bias that could be inherent or you know some of it could be uh, maybe deliberate i hope that answers thank you uh, so i take the second part of dr pranta's question and he asks is there any method to verify the authenticity of this data as i said you know uh, the uh, it's, a, it's it's a very elaborate technique so it's not you know uh, just about uh, so uh, the first one say for example that who is responsible for data so that is one technique it could be uh, uh, a very simple thing about you know going out to and you know go, doing a google search about you know who is responsible for this uh, uh, data going about you know uh, how was it analyzed so uh, looking at the data you know maybe the tables and looking at you know the uh, analytic structures that have gone there so there is not one you know one size fits all uh, kind of a technique it's just that you know uh, there are the you know, this this is a very elaborate way of you know uh, uh, of asking questions from the data and of being you know uh, kind of uh, not taking that face value of of uh, you know uh, taking it with uh, as as much uh, you know uh, care as you would with a regular news source okay uh, thank you uma and this is from uh, Ishrat, yes. as mentioned earlier, we can extract new stories via the ROSS feed. However, mm -hmm. can we get specific stories as well? What if I just want stories related to Virat Kohli alone? Can we somehow filter? Yeah, so this one was about, you know, getting it on a regular basis. So uh, I'm, I'm not talking about the regular, uh, you know, uh, uh, Google search. Of course, you know, if, if it is uh, there on your spreadsheet or if you're, you know, uh, changing the spreadsheet every day, because as I said, you know, when we take these RSS feeds, it keeps updating on a regular basis. So if you keep, uh, you know, uh, kind of a uh, list of these stories, then you can, you know, do a simple search and find out for that. But this one was about, you know, regularly updating your stories about, uh, you know, from news organizations. And of course, you know, the RSS feed could be about, uh, uh, you know, uh, other other specific areas. It could be about Virat as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And this is another from uh, Paul. Uh, and it reads, during the time of lockdown for the past four months, we've seen many stories, especially in sports, based on data journalism. But during the time of hardcore action, how is it possible to quickly check the data and go for stories for a daily newspaper? Why I'm asking so is that after an action, it's a very little time left for journalists to check data and analyze because deadline is a big concern for the dailies. So will the dailies appoint some data analyst specialists? So uh, yeah, that, that's a that's that's a fabulous question. So uh, it, it's it's where, that's where you know uh, the initial uh, distinction of you know the techie journalist and the news hound journalist that I was talking about, and that's where many uh, journalists you know they use uh, various techniques of you know maybe uh, keeping the codes ready of you know uh, how to uh, uh, you know extract data or how to you know uh, get a particular data. So there are very simple. Uh, course that one could be working with you could be working with maybe a, a data specialist as a team or you know uh, you could be uh, uh, you know preparing yourself uh, for 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 these uh, you know acquiring these hard skills but yes again as we said that you know data is used in this but in these particular stories more as an addendum more as a you know additional uh, input when you know when sporting actions are happening but at the same time you know people are looking for the larger picture you know how has it changed or what are the records and all these things fortunately for us you know all these uh, fabulous uh, uh, data processing uh, techniques are very easily available and there are all these you know some of these apps that i spoke of you know they can help us to access data very easily and also to you know analyze that but this transition from a news hound to a techie is not uh, very smooth and you know it, it is happening at various levels so you know it's, it, this is this is uh, you know one uh, area that we are always uh, you know negotiating or journalists are especially you know in the indian context we uh, are uh, you know looking at specialized data analysts you know doing that job for journalists 
these days you know a lot of journalists may not be using it uh, themselves there are you know techniques of machine learning or, uh, and uh, you know or all such stuff uh, as well you know which can be used in in uh, everyday reporting but it, it could be very difficult for you know when you when you're running against a deadline and uh, so it could be about more about you know uh, explanatory stories for for a later occasion okay thank you ma this is from subharish what will be the main and authentic source to get international data in other words if i want to get a data from a country like china is there any authentic source for retrieving this data yeah so if it is if it is not public then you know you have to go for the human so that's where you know when i spoke about uh, you know the the performity the materiality and you know the reflexivity of, of a data journalist so when uh, you know the material information is not available and that's where the human element comes in so that is where the performity of, of a data journalist you know comes in of you know trying to uh, get information from from sources uh, which could have that data and you know which would be relevant as well as you know uh, reliable otherwise we have you know a lot of uh, data which is uh, present so when we talk of the material data which is public data it's there for most of the cases but you know for cases where the data is not available and that's where you know the challenge could be and that's where the as i said the human element the, the performative element of uh, the uh, data journalist comes into the picture okay uh this is from das and this is the last uh, question we can take uh for this particular webinar and das is asking when data is manipulated at source materials what can <laughs> journalists do to extract and verify the authentic data at the source level so that's where you know uh, I, that's what i was talking about you know where uh, and that's where you know the data biography comes in so again you know uh, trying to relate it with other sources so if it is if it is a one off source so you you do not generally rely just on on one data set so whether you know whether one particular data set tells a picture which is very different from similar data sets so that's where you know these uh, uh, you know there's, there's, there's a flag that goes up so uh, as i said you know this data biography technique is a very important technique which uh, which which becomes a part of uh, everyday journalism of you know uh, trying to uh, be very careful about uh, you know the data we use so uh, when when we uh, say for example as i said when when it is very different from other similar data sources or when it is very different from very other trends that's where you know we uh, are uh, you know that's when 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 we get this uh, impulse to, you know go deeper into the data so again as i said you know there is not one quick uh, solution for it it's it's, it's something that we uh, negotiate on a regular basis on a case to case basis Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Uma, for those insightful answers to the questions of the audience. So, um, for those of us that have asked questions that we're not able to take uh, right now, not to worry, all your questions uh, will be answered and will be posted on the Codata Connect um, platform and we will inform you duly. And I would hand over to Shelley uh, for the concluding aspect of the webinar. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Felix, and thank you, Dr. Pandey, and everyone around who has been helping us organize this webinar. And I thank you um, to our, I thank our audience for joining us today, and we appreciate you being here and your patience. So, on behalf of Core Data Connect Early Career and Alumni Network, I would like to invite you all to take part in ongoing essay writing competition and datathon. And the last dates for submissions are 30th July. I have added the links for both of them in the chat box. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much.